Greetings YouTube. Since I began posting videos to the internet here on YouTube, I have had a number of people ask me what is a role-playing game, because I get people from all over the world who visit my channel for a number of different reasons. Some come for political commentary, some come for movie reviews, the non-fiction reviews, some come for specifically the role-playing content. And there isn't a lot of overlap there. You know you have people there for one thing and not for another. That's okay, I'm alright with that. I have a myriad of interests and I um, like the fact that I can meet people who have uh, who share the same ideas that I do on, on different topics. But one of the things that I encounter a lot, because the most niche of my interests are role-playing games, is people ask me who are, aren't in the role-playing game community, what are role-playing games? So I thought I would do a brief overview of what role-playing games are. I'm not going to get into really specifics about particular role-playing games, just general overview. Now, I'm sure that everyone watching this has, is either is a child or was a child at one time. And when you were a child, or if you still are, have you ever played cops and robbers? Did you ever play cowboys and Indians? Did you ever pretend to be a knight slaying a dragon or a princess trying to find a clever uh, solution to a puzzle? Were you ever a princess that slayed a dragon? Did you ever play tea party with your stuffed animals? If you've done any of these things, you have role-played. Because that's what role-playing is at the very basic. It's pretending to be something you're not for entertainment. Now, role-playing games are a little more structured than that. Um, they have Most of them have some form of rules. They have usually have some form of random generation of results to emulate the randomness of nature. Like, I could try to jump across a puddle depending on how big the puddle is, is going to depend how well I'm going to succeed, and in my case, I'm not likely to succeed, I'm really bad at jumping. Um, so we use dice frequently to emulate that random nature. We use just, some dice right here, and these dice right here are not dice you want to use for actual role-playing games, because they're loaded dice. One of them has nothing but fives on it, and the other one has nothing but twos and sixes. Picked them up for a dollar. Thought they were cute. I never owned a set of loaded dice. Um, as well as you're doing this with other people, not just you know your stuffed animals at a tea party or the one or two friends friends you're necessarily playing cops and robbers with, but you could be doing this with a group of people. Four or five is a nice number. Sitting around a table, engaging in the role playing process. Now one person is going to usually run the game. Um, they are frequently referred to as the Dungeon Master, which is the classically traditional term that came out of Dungeons and Dragons, or the Game Master, which is a more generic term referring to someone that can be running any number of different role-playing games. There are hundreds of role-playing games on the market today, um, though there are so only a few, a handful of really big contenders that are currently in, active and it's still in print. Um, and even though the rules can get very complex, and they can get very fiddly and nitpicking, and there are people who are willing to get into uh, vicious online discussions and fights over what is and is not proper role-playing, there are people who will say that it's about simulation, there's people who are saying that it's about, you know, it's about storytelling, you're going to find hundreds of different opinions, just as you will find hundreds of different, opinion, different opinions about sports. What is the purpose of sports? What do you like in sports? What's your sport, favorite sport? What's it within that favorite sport? Who is your favorite team within that favorite team? Who you're, you, know, you can get the idea. There's always going to be another level of discussion. And the more you get into a, a hobby, the deeper that discussion gets. The problem is, is that role-playing games are a fairly niche market there aren't a lot of us in it. We tend to be fairly loyal to it. I've been doing it since 1978. Um, but it can be a lot of fun. As I said, you have one person that runs the game. They literally control the world. So I have frequently been a GM in the past. And that means that I set up a storyline. I create a background. I am essentially doing the production and direction using movie terms, of the entire film that is the role-playing game. 
Okay, everything in that setting, I control. You know, each of the people at the table traditionally play one character. Sometimes they'll play more, depending on the type of system is, and telling how complex the system gets, and how how things fall over the course of uh, role playing. Now, each session tends not to be a unique game. Games can take a, a single storyline could take four or five sessions to play out, and if you'd run a number of storylines in a row, you create a campaign. And yes, that's a term borrowed from the military and borrowed from people who did war gaming because role playing games as we know them today evolved out of tabletop war games using miniatures to um, reproduce historical battles and eventually fictitious battles and eventually fantasy role playing games grew out of that. And since each person runs one character traditionally, they can invest a lot in that character. That character can become very important to them. Um, they will create a name a history, a background for that character. And the beautiful thing about role-playing games is you aren't stuck in any one genre. Um, you can have games that cover multiple genres, or you can have games that are dedicated to a specific genre. Now a lot of the times when people think of role-playing games, they think of Dungeons and Dragons. And from the name, it involves a fantasy, fantasy setting, a fan fictitious medieval kind of a setting. Dragons and orcs, Middle-earth. Narnia, um, that kind of thing right there. Thieves' World, if, you're, if, if, you, if you are a fan of the novels. Um, and that's the, what is many people, when they think of role-playing games, that's what they think of. I know if you were to ask me what a role-playing game is, that's the first thought that's going to pop into my head is going to be D&D. &D. But there are many other genres. There are people who do historical role-playing, role-playing set in an exact real-world period, and they just want the ability to play new adventures within that context. There are people who like to play science fiction, extrapolations of the current world. Some play very hard science fiction. They're really rooted in reality and science and what is going to happen in the future based on realistic interpretations of politics and religion and things like that. There are people who like to play much more loose uh, science fiction tropes. For example, Star Trek. That's pretty loose, all right? You have all kinds of wacky aliens, science comes and goes, it's quite mutable. Um, it's not hard science fiction in the least. There are people who like to do spy novels, so the spy adventures like James Bond, you know, the, the, that, that's a, a perfect example. People who want to play Bond or a Bond-like character. People like to role play in the Old West. Um, there are people who like to create entirely new settings that have no basis in reality or a different view of a period in the past. For example, steampunk, which is a kind of a, a looking at the world as if the Victorian era continued and created robots and spaceships and giant walkers. Uh, some of the things you, you might see in uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, uh, Wild Wild West, um, and things like that, though not the horrible, horrible movie. Um, so this is genre for everyone, literally everything you can think of, anime, manga fans, people who like giant robots, um, people who like post-apocalyptic settings. I'm a big fan of the post-apocalyptic setting. I apologize, I got a itchy nose today. Um, it's endless, and there are people who like to mix them. I even know one gentleman and from a Usenet news group. Um, the D&D news group that I frequent, and I've been a, me a member for years, he's run games where he's had people, five different players, and each player is running a character from a different rule system, and yet he still runs them all together in the same group. How he does this or why he does this, I'm not sure, but I know he, does, he has in the past. Um, he plays really high-level campaigns where the characters are essentially one step below gods. And that can be cool if you like that. And then there are people who like grim and gritty games where you have to scrape and survive the most brutally realistic existence that there is. I fall somewhere in the middle. I don't like it quite as grim and gritty, and I don't necessarily like it quite as godlike. But role playing games are about interacting with your friends and having fun. Alright? It's it's about exchanging ideas, it's about a GM presenting the players with a, with with a plot line and a storyline, and the player is taking it into directions that he never, he or she never 
thought of. And that's refreshing and it's fun. People coming up with ideas on the fly that they didn't even have in their heads when they started gaming that day. Now, most people run games. They usually play anywhere between once a week and once a month. That's fairly average. I used to play twice a month uh, when I was running a regular campaign. Um, and the session usually ran from like three to five hours. It depends on what we were doing. And that's fairly typical. Though when I was a kid, I was younger and a teenager, we would play every single week, sometimes more than once a week, and we could play for 12 hours straight because that was our escape. That was our, our ultimate outlet for entertainment. Okay, we could do things in a way that we couldn't do in the real world because we were fairly powerless teenagers. Um, but role-playing game is a lot of fun. Uh, it's about engaging your friends and in, enjoying what you do. And it's a good way to meet people. I've met a lot of people back when I was gaming in high school, and I still know them now some 30 years later. All right? So that's cool. All right? So I know I didn't get into a lot of details as far as specific games, and if there are requests in the future for people who want more specific details about a specific game, say someone who wants to talk about D&D, um, and a version that I'm willing to talk about, an edition I, I like, I, I, I will do so. Um, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of what it is to do a role-playing game, so that if anyone ever asks me again, I can point them to this video, and I don't have to keep typing the same passage over and over again in 500 characters. But 